<laughs> okay, we need we need money. We need money bad. loading ahead of schedule one of the crew invites you aboard here's more meal thank you can't see okay yes boom nothing happening there Side reel is being loaded and prepped. Among all the commotions possible, to, is it possible to find a way on board? Oh, interesting. We're gonna finish this up. Let's do the three. If I can give that six to that other thing, I will. There we go. Boom. As you both wait in the airlock for it to cycle back to the bay, Bliss thumps you on the arm. Nicely done, sleeper. We cleared that contract, no problem, she stretches. Once we are back in the bay, we can check if the payment has come through and divide it up. She stretches, feels good. The airlock clunks and the lights flicker, and a moment later, you are back in the bay, where Mortz is at its racks trying to figure out where the mess of tools Bliss left in her wake should be hung. Hey, Mortz. Mortz looks over his shoulder. Sleeper. He spins a wrench in his hand. Looked like clean work out there. He nods respectfully. You look over at Bliss, who is already gliding over to her management console. She twirls a little as she crosses the cavernous bay. No one you'd ever met moves as well in zero G as she does. It's like she was born into it. Shit. Bliss slams. Fist into the cancel. Shit, shit, shit. Oh no. What's up? I can't even. Bliss closes her eyes. Come here. Bliss calls you over. Look at this. Just look. She spins the terminal screen. And you see the details for the base account. You see an entry for the Ember's Wake. A repair fee paid in full the moment you finished up the job. But then directly after the whole amount was transferred back out to an unknown account. What the hell? This is the work of my ex. She punches the terminal. He must have coded a backdoor into the machine before he left. She rubs her forehead. There's no way we can. She pauses thinking, Mortz, throw me that wrench. Going to fix it? Mort spins the wrench around the bay. Bliss smiles. Something like that. Bliss brings the wrench down on the terminal hard. You flinch backward as a hail of computer parts spill into the bay in a glittering arc. Fragments of screen, memory, sections of the casing. When Bliss is done, she clips the wrench to her toolbox. Try backing, <laughs> dooring your way into that, you shit. Mort's drifts out from his hiding place among the racks. Bliss, he says tentatively. You want me to, uh... He looks at the arc fragments drifting around the bay nervously. Bliss shakes her head. No. She sighs. I've got you. You go get me a new terminal. Cheapest you can find. Cobble one together from pieces at the ore exchange if you have to. Can I help? Bliss guides, glides over to the panel by the wall. Don't worry. One of the first things I had installed when 
we specked out this place was a cleaning sweep. She flicked over a plastic cover on a huge red button. Watch yourself. She hammers the button and a row of laser emitters unfold from the bay wall. They start crawling their way across the work area, frying the debris as they do in the pulses of burning light. Bliss smiles. It's that or just the space or just space the whole pay every few cycles. It's one now. Bliss sighs. We keep at it. The cleaning sweep buzzes and cracks as it works its way across the bay. That account wasn't everything. I'm not that stupid. Once Mortz gets back, I'll secure it and flush everything else. She flicks a nearby piece of debris into the path of the sweep. Clean break. Then we take another contract. That's it. She shuts off the sweep as it reaches near the end of the bay. Um, I'm in. You better be, she laughs, because there's no way you're getting your investment back unless you are. She rubs her forearm. I'm sorry, sleeper. I know you worked hard for this, too, but next time won't be the same. Better not be. She looks away. See you in a few cycles. Mortz will let you know. She kicks off into the bay and finishes cleaning up. Damn it. Okay. Well, crap. Okay. Um. Yeah, let's. Let's throw our six into this. Or. Uh, no, I need money. I need money. I need money and food. Ooh, Nina. There's no answer when you buzz Lem's unit, but the door is open. You push the door and find Mina sitting in the middle of the floor playing with Bun Bun. Hi, Mina. Hi, robot, <laughs> says Mina sullenly, waving Bun Bun's paw without looking up. How are you? Bun Bun is sad, says Mina, nodding at the toys, head in agreement like daddy. Oh. You look around the unit. It's a mess. Dishes and glasses on the side. Some of Mina's clothes piled up in a corner. Mina sitting by her bag, which is spilled out across the floor. Her drawing slate cracked and dark. Tidy up. You start with the kitchen utensils, piling up the dishes in the auto wash and wiping them down. You pile the clothes up next, folding them neatly. Mina watches you quietly as she plays, curious but silent. You've just started to look at fixing her cracked slate when Lem, en Lem enters. Sleeper, what are you? He pauses and looks from you to Mina and back in. Never mind. He drops a bag by the door and slumps into the couch. Everything okay? Lem lets out a weak laugh. You forgot the past few cycles too? Wish I was so lucky. <laughs> he looks away at the open door. Look, now's not a good time. I want to help. Help? Unless you have a side rail ticket or two on you. I don't think there's much you can do here. He pinches the bridge of his nose. You understand, they never even put us on the list, right? I've been all around the rim looking for work, and I've run into more than a few from the crews. It turns out only long-time Havinge members were issued those sell us ID numbers. They never planned to consider us. Havinge say they didn't know that was what they were going to use to make the draw. And who knows, maybe sell us pull the wool over our, over our eyes. But what does that matter? All those hours in the yard for our hand to mouth wage, nothing else. He slams his hand down on the sofa. That can't be it. Well, it is. He looks up at the open door again. They are moving the side rail up the hub now, you know, he says without meeting your eye. That's where it'll depart from. They are bringing in a ship with all their cryosleep pioneers and transferring them up there in microgravity before loading the crew. Uh, we could sneak aboard. <laughs> you think they're going to just let people on board? The security they'll have has to be impossible. 
He looks over at Mina. Look, we'll be fine. We've always have been. I just need a little more time, he sighs. We had our hearts set on this trip, that's all. Mina comes over and climbs on his lap and smiles. What if I got you on board? I missed you these past couple of few, these past few cycles. I miss that optimism. Lem strokes me his hair. Look, you want to go up on the hub and ask around? Be my guest. I can't get up there with Mina down here, and I'm sure the side reel will be crowd. Will bring in a crowd. But be careful. This kind of thing always attracts scammers and thieves. You find any way on board, you take it. You need help to get there, ask me. But for now, me and Mina here are sticking to the eye. She looks up at him and smiles. I'll find a way for all of us. Lem smiles but doesn't say anything. You stand to leave and Mina grabs your hand, eager to give you one more smile. Then you are out. Back in the walkway of the low end, already thinking of plans to make this right. Damn straight. Gotta get those two out of here. Yep, we're doing it. <laughs> you ask a few of the off-duty workers about schedules and systems and get a few useful tips. Okay. Okay. That's it for this cycle. Okay. We are starving once again. cycle before we go down to two. Boom. You watch the loading crews going back and forth, noting their paths and entryways. Could this work? We're halfway there. We are starving. Let's do some noodle manufacturing that will get us food as well and money. Boom. The kelp in the snack is golden brown. As you eat the noodles at the end of the ship, you imagine the distinct oceans that birth it. We'll do one more shift. You mess up a batch <laughs> and Mingin docks your pay. It makes you eat the result. The noodles are unpleasantly gooey. Well, that's that, I guess. Yeah. We got one more cycle. 
Oh, I need money bad. They're still here? Oh, this is the last day. Okay. sell scrap if I have to. Dang it. Oh no, we got the hunter. We got the hunter. We got the hunter. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Thank you. Let's take our stabilizer now. Whew. Okay. Those are some good rolls. We're going to do this. Come on. Let's do... Do I want to risk? I think. No. We're, we're getting him out for sure. There it is. Okay. You hope against... You hope against hope that there's a chink in the side rail's vast armor. There it is. Quite the achievement, isn't she? Sandra Sellis must be proud. You recognize the resonating voice of Castor immediately and turn to see him hooded and tucked into the shadows near the viewing platform. Caster? I see you remember our game. Good. He looks around, but the platform is clear. I'm afraid you'll have to wait for a rematch. Microgravity makes Tavla a little difficult. He smells broadly. Caster walks out and stands beside you on the platform. The telltale clunk of magnetic boots accompanies his slow crossing. He notices you looking at them. I don't much like it up here, he explains. I hear there was some trouble at having sh shipyard when they announced the results of the crew lottery. Lottery. Uh, I was there. I know. He sighs, meeting your eyes. An ugly business. Sellers are too used to the way things were in the core. Exploitation is the only logic they know. He gestures out at the side rail. You know why they built this monstrosity on the eye? Control. Certainly. There's no corporate oversight out here. But that's not all. He stares at the pristine yellow hole. Cellus built it here, he says, says Kesser gravely, because they didn't want anyone to know it exists. He rubs his forehead. And sec secretly is something I cannot abide. He turns to face you. There are people being loaded onto that ship as we speak. Sleeping people, locked in cryo sleep like the person that you were emulated from. There are hundreds of them, and Celis wants to send them out to a planet at the edge of the settled system without anyone knowing where it is. But you, sleeper, you can do something about that. You are like me. You deal with data. You can read it right out of the air. With someone like you on that ship, Secrecy isn't a problem. You can ping back whatever I need. You can ping back whatever I need whenever I need it, as long as you are on board. With you on the side reel, and with some minor modifications, he pauses, you can be my eyes and ears. 
I will keep track of Celeste's grand project through you. In short, says Caster, stretching, I can get you aboard the sleeper, but I'm going to need you to help me. Who are you? I am a concerned party, someone who likes to know what is happening when it is happening, not afterwards. It's not just me. Yes, your friend Lem. That can be arranged. It is difficult, but not impossible. The condition is, of course, that you go too. Caster clunks closer to the window, watching the tugs wheeling around the side rail. It's a simple offer, and the only one that will get you on that ship. Please consider it. He turns back to silhouetted against the ship. To make it happen, I need your assistance. And as I said, there is a Celis Foundation ship docked in the now emptied shipyard. I need the data from its servers. This will allow me to produce the IDs necessary for your transit. Caster looks over his glasses at you. Celis aren't stupid enough. Their ship is totally isolated from the station. You'll need to get on board if you want access to their air walled servers. Once you have that data, meet me at your friend's unit so we can give him the good news. He smiles. I noticed his importance to you and the little one, so cute. You don't extract the data before the side rail horizon leaves the hub, then I will get the message. We have other options, but you are certainly my preferred one. But be sure when you act sleeper, once you take the data from Celis, You'll set off a series of events that will likely be hard for you to untangle from yourself from. Either way, I recommend you stop asking your around up here. You're bringing a lot of attention to yourself. Kessler glances around as if to emphasize his point. There are only a handful of cycles until departure sleeper. Make your decision. With that, Caster marches back off the platform. The sound of his bag boots fading away, leaving you to contemplate the side rail horizon and the part it may play in your future. Interesting. Um. Escape. There it is. Upgrade point yet? No. Okay. Okay. Let's let's finish building our house. Not that one. That one. Oh, we are starving. Noodle factory, we need... Boom. That works. Okay. Sleeper, horse is waiting for you on your way out. How have you been? Busy. I see, I see. He nods. Well, I'll get right to it then. Bliss sent me down. We've scored another contract. She needs your help. That's the message. He pauses. Look, I know last time the payment didn't come through, but you did good work. Bliss knows that. Uh, it's no problem. 
Okay, then. He pauses. She's doing her best, you know. I know. He nods. See you up there. Mortz turns and strides off, leaving you in the corridor. I'm gonna help Bliss, and maybe this time, you think to yourself, it'll work out. 